So John Jansen was hired as outside linebackers coach and special teams coordinator for your LSU Tigers. He was already on the staff last year as a defensive analyst. Uh, this is a guy who's been in college football for over 20 years, has a hell of a resume, ton of Kelly ties as he actually got his start as a GA back at Grand Valley State in 1991. So uh, he's no stranger to Coach Kelly. Um, interestingly, Jake, he has never coached special teams before, saying, quote, I have been involved with special teams my entire career, so the opportunity to lead our special teams is something I'm very excited about. We have a great group of young men on our team, and I can't wait to get started. Um, now, we'll get back to that, never having coached special teams before. Um, but his coaching career, like I said, the resume is nice, right? He coached uh, linebackers at Georgia from 05 to 08. He eventually became co-defensive coordinator in 09. Obviously, they were very good uh, for those five years. Um, he was a defensive coordinator in Cincinnati, 2010 through 2012, where he was a part of a bunch of 10 win teams. Uh, defensive coordinator at Tennessee. Uh, is, are, is 13 to 15, is that Pruitt? Or is it pre no. Pruitt? That's Butch yes. Jones. Trash era. Yeah, Trash can. Dooley would have been during your time, obviously. Yeah. Orange pants when you snapped the ball. 13 15 has to be Butch Jones, right? Like, there's not another coach in there somewhere that I'm missing, right? No, it's Dooley to Butch, right? What? Is that what it went? Right. Hmm. By the way, Jancic was there um, 13 15. Uh, then he goes to South Florida, spins according to Colorado State, which is, yeah, I guess it would have been Bobo, maybe. I mean, you, you look, these guys are all in the same fraternity, right? They're all hooking each other up with jobs. Uh, he was a quality control assistant on Georgia for the national championship in 2021. He was an analyst at LSU last year, and now he's back to an on-field role as outside linebackers coach. Now, Jake, the reason why I think it's so interesting, um, well, uh, what is your reaction to giving the title of special teams coordinator to someone who has never actually coached special teams? Uh, that was Butch Jones, uh, by the way. Well, there confirmation you. there. Um Every coach in, in college and professional football, if you're a position coach, you coach special teams. You have a role on sometimes one, sometimes multiple special teams. Like you have a coach that coaches the returners, a coach that coaches the front line on kickoff return, a coach that coaches punt return, and so, like kickoff. You have guys like that. Now, in the NFL, it's not as much, but college football, it is. Everybody's involved. So when he says he's been involved in special teams, as you know as well, T., He's been out there. He's coached multiple positions on special teams. And, you know, would you think that maybe a specialized special teams coach would come in here? Maybe so. But they also were looking for someone to help with outside linebackers. Yeah, he has a lot of experience. And, and the there. pass rush um, situations is something that they, they've pointed out. So, like, you bring in somebody that's going to coach outside linebackers, and he's also going to coach special teams. But I would assume – it's going to be with, you know, obviously the help from the other assistants. And so maybe not as, hey, this is the single voice that you're going to hear. Yeah, so that's what I'm interested to talk about Shay Dixon, uh, to talk about with Shay Dixon at 9 a.m., Jake. I think there is a bit of an idea where this will be special teams by committee. And you'll have guys like Bob Diaco, who we'll get into in a second, who has coached special teams before, who um, will, will play a large role in that. So I feel like, they're kind of saying, okay, we're going to special teams by committee, but you know, ever, somebody has to be the guy that leads meetings, that calls everybody up, like that does these things, and then that will be Jancic. I guess the reason why I find it a bit intriguing, and and I don't know if I mean that in a like I mean that in the literal way, right? Not not saying that it's a positive or a negative, but when was LSU special teams at their best in the past what ten years? When they went and got a special teams legend. Yeah, and Greg, McMahon. Greg McMahon. I mean, Greg McMahon was a legend of the game already. He'd been in the New Orleans Saints forever, had a lot of success there. Um, the Saints have a bit of a downturn of a year. He becomes available. O snaps him up. And overnight, he took what was a huge weakness and made it into a huge strength. And then it doesn't help him. And man leaves, and it goes back to being a huge weakness. And now you, again, hire a guy with no special teams experience. So we'll see. And, and I feel you. It's like, it's maybe not fair to say because you're involved. But Greg McMahon was special teams, and you saw the uh, the the impact that it had on the team. So here's hoping that Jancic and uh, company can uh, can get this thing right. Uh, yeah. So this is you trying to go get someone that is going to help you on defense to coach special teams more like you used to see it. 
when I was at LSU, Derek Dooley was the special teams coach and also the running backs coach. When we were together, Bradley Dale Pivato was the special teams coach, but also the linebackers coach. Yes. So, like, that's how you've always really done it in college football. Now you got the extra assistant, so a lot of people were bringing in special teams coordinators. That's what I was saying. I feel like it started that to was, change yeah, recently. Yeah, but that was new. Yeah. Like, you, you've you always – I'm trying to think if I'm missing one of our special teams coordinators. No, it was it – was, it was, P- was it still Pivato, oh, no, like, no, at the no, end no, of your career? No, 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 no. That, no, we, were, we had a couple. We had – um. We had uh, Joe Robb, who oh, felt so bad. Everybody used to clown him. I'll never. I mean, he did not command a lot of respect, unfortunately. Like Barksdale would just do impressions of him in front of him, oh, no. the piss out of him. Yeah, it was it was it was bad. I'll never what forget. Was his secondary um, position? Everybody yelling at him. I can't even remember. He was mainly <laughs> special teams. Uh, but I remember everybody yelling at him in a Florida game on 2010 when. We had scored a big touchdown to start the fourth, take like a 10 point lead, and then they returned the kick for the touchdown. And everybody was like, what the F, Joe Rob? Yeah, so, yeah, no. that. But then we had a beast, actually. Um, uh, T-Mac. Terrence McGahee, is that right? Am I, why am I blanking right here? Coach T-Mac. He, he came from the NFL. He had been a special teams guy in the NFL. And he was, uh, he was, he was very good. i got to look it up. Why is my, my mind, man? Hmm. So Too like, much extracurricular activities for your boy here when it comes to trying to remember stuff. So this isn't maybe the way that some people are doing it now, but certainly in the history of college football, this is how it's been done. You get a position coach to coach special teams and kind of be the leader of that unit. Danny, do you have the document open? Do you see the Bob Diaco link? It's a Facebook link. So Bob Diaco was also announced, I know, as a... Uh, so, uh, sorry, real yeah, quick, because I forget. Uh, like, Alabama still has the same situation. Uh, Coleman Holzer is the outside linebackers coach and special teams coordinator. So not everybody is specialized in using that extra assistance solely on someone who only does special teams. Yeah, yeah, that's right. And look, man. Um, I think what Cochran, that's what Cochran went to Georgia for. Yes. Just to be a special teams coordinator. And again, I am not offering a, I'm not saying this is right or wrong. I'm just saying it's, it's, it's something to watch for because when LSU was elite in that regard recently, they had a dedicated guy. Uh, but maybe maybe it won't matter. Maybe they can get there without a dedicated guy like like we have in the past. We, we, we will see. Danny, you have this link ready? Okay, so this is um, Bob Diaco, who I know he's been in the game for a while, so this is unfair for me to say. I mean, he was a defensive coordinator in Nebraska. He was a head coach at UConn. Um, he's a good-looking man, though. He's going to give Marcus Freeman a, a, a run for his money, uh, or maybe Marcus Freeman's giving Diaco a run for his money in terms of best-looking coach in the NFL. You know Jonathan Groff from Mindhunter? Voice of Kristoff, played uh, George yes. in Hamilton. He's a uh, glee as well. Oh, is he really? Yeah. Huh. Well, Diaco looks a bit like him to me. But look at the Les Miles energy coming in. This is an infamous Bob Diaco clip from when he was at Nebraska. Watch his answer after Nebraska loses in overtime to Northwestern. Here's what Diaco had to say about his defense. There's no reasonable reason considering where the defensive program was at to believe that they should be able to do everything that needs to be done in the game to to win the game. The strain is spectacular, right? So we can just go back and look at the game. And you see, do you see the strain? I mean, do you see it or no? Or is it just something that I'm missing? Right? You can't play a game like that and win. Right, so the things that happened in the game create like an impossible circumstance to win against a great team. Right? <laughs> I don't know exactly what we just said. I do love though. Uh, if he asked me if I'm feeling the strain, I'm so confused at that point. I'm just going along with him. Like, no, no, I see. Yeah, I saw it too, coach. I saw the strain. I mean, what are you gonna do? The team just where the team is could he overcome. interviewing at? In the. <laughs> The dining hall? This was like 2017 Nebraska, yeah. I think. Um, see a kitchen behind him? Times have changed, even in a few Typically, short years like, in college football. Coordinators don't get talked to after a game either. <laughs> well, you might be. WTF is he saying? Yeah, no, I mean, the less miles energy. The strain is spectacular. Do you see it? It's not just me, right? You see it? Uh, you, it's like, <laughs> if you could just uh, do, oh, God, look at how good looking he is, though, dude. It's kind of unbelievable. Shout out Diaco. Let's go to break. In the chat, Jake, there's a debate going on 
uh, between uh, I want to credit uh, Fantastic Funky Bunch and uh, some others as Funky Bunch is 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 asking questions about is this like is this higher talking about Jancic is this um, should we be upset is this a lazy hire is this a good old boys hire is this like like if if you're someone who believes that what got them into trouble in the first place with Polian was hiring you know your 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 friends. Is it a problem to seemingly do the same here once again just a year later? And if the resume wasn't the resume, I mean, as far as like where he's been, now you could certainly question the special teams portion of the resume because as we laid out, like there's, you know, special teams coordinators only. That's all they do. Yeah. Um, so like if you want to say something like that's where I, I guess you would ask the question because – He's coached special teams before. Again, like we laid out, it's just not been as the coordinator. So I don't even necessarily, like if his resume wasn't what it was, you could certainly ask that question. So I think the question that you want to ask is, okay, you haven't been a coordinator before. What's the plan? Yeah, I think also when it comes to hiring friends or whatever, um, there's a certain element of that's just football. And it's not that these hires can't work out, but it's like any other business, right? It's it's really how the entire world works. You tend to hire people that you know or people that you have shared or similar backgrounds with. And a lot of times not even conscious. It just kind of happens that way. Um, Jancic was already on staff last year, right? So yeah. you 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 know, there's already a familiarity there. Not 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 just because, but look, also, I mean him and Brian Kelly, like you said, his first job was a GA at Grand Valley State back in nineteen ninety one. So there's extreme deep familiarity. Yeah, I'm sure they were there. at Cincinnati together as well. Yeah, and it's like one of those deals where if you're Brian Kelly, what are you all about? You're all about alignment. You're all about everybody understanding the vision, being on the same page, working in the same direction. Well, here you have a guy that you already know will be lined up. And if you're like, oh, well, this is awful. Well, Georgia's just did the same thing, but with Mike Bobo in the offensive coordinator job, right? It's Kirby's boy. I mean, they literally went together, party together, were great friends in college. Yeah. Um, he spent last year as an analyst. You lose Munkin, who's one of the premier offensive minds in all of college football, maybe in all of football, and you replace him with Mike Bobo? But that's just kind of how football works. Yeah. Um, I mean, Georgia also hired Scott Cochran when they did out of the weight room. Yeah. Cochran had never had on the field. Now, he helped out of practice maybe, but they hired him from the weight room. Listen.